all right so good afternoon everyone i welcome you back to my youtube channel presenting before you this wonderful tutorial is your mental and climate so today we will be uh learning how to prove the morgan's law um the simplest way so to those of you that are new to this channel don't forget to subscribe and also hit the like button and also don't forget to share so we do have a very interesting question here and it is saying prove and verify the morgan's law okay so we have been given a union b complemented we prove that and verify that it is equal to a complement intersection b complement let's get started Okay, so proving the Morgan's law is all about showing that what you have on the right hand side and on the on the left hand side and the right hand side are equal. You have everything that is here and everything that is there is equal using principles of sets, algebraic principles of sets. So I'll be able to show in this video just how to do such a question. Let's get started. Okay, so we have. We have A union B complement equal to A complement intersection B complement. Okay? Now we will start with the left hand side. Left hand side. Now for the left hand side. What we're simply saying here is this. Let's imagine that X is simply some member of A union B complement. Then what we're simply saying is that if X was a member of A union B complement, okay, then that simply means that X is not a member of A union B. Okay? That's just it. Now, if X is not a member of um, A union B, then that simply means that X will never be a member of A of set A and this same X will never be a member of set B. Okay? What we're simply saying is this. If you have, let's say you have set A, you have set B, then you get to have this table, the intersection set. A intersection B is simply this region, right? But then complement simply means outside. So what they're saying is A intersection B complement simply means that our X is in the intersection region. So it's not a member of A and it's not a member of B. But having shown this, we can now state that X, therefore, is a member of A complement, right? True, because it's outside A and B. And this same X is simply a member of B complement. Okay? Then that simply means that if this is true, then X is a member of A complement and B complement, which simply states that, okay, because here we have just proved what is on the right hand side. You see, this, we have proved it here. X is a member of A complement and X is a member of B complement, which is here. Therefore, 
we can simply state that whatever is on the left hand side is equal to whatever is on the right hand side. You see, this is the proof it's able to hold because we saw that this side we proved that if X is, is a member of this, this set here, then automatically X cannot be a member of this set without the complement. Okay? And we showed that if that is the case, then X being the member of A complement and X being the member of B complement, then therefore X will be a member of A intersection B complement, exactly as the statement here. But then, I, I guess we have been given the second question and it will be able to, it will be easy for us to, 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 to solve this question, to prove everything on the second part. So the second part, we have been given you as that, that, that union, that union set. So let's do it here. Okay, so I've been given the union set of, um, saying the union set is simply, is one, two, three, four, five, uh, six, seven, eight, and a nine. Okay? And the nine. And they are saying that A is equal to two, comma four, comma six, comma eight, and they are saying that our set B is equal to 2, 3, 5, and 7. Now, what does this mean? This simply means that they want us to prove, they want us to verify that this is equal to this. Now, this time around, we'll be using numbers to prove. So now, we want to prove that what is here and what is here are, are the same. So let's do this. Let's say left hand side. What are we going to do? Let's state the union of, we work out what is in the bracket, so we state the union of A union B. So A union B will equal to what set is that? Whatever is in A and B combined, so it will be a two comma. So it will be a two comma, three comma, four comma, a five comma, a six comma, a seven comma, eight. Okay. Now, if we add the complement to the top, it simply means. Whatsoever is in this set compared to whatever is in the union set, get whatsoever is in the union set which is not in here. We are going to remain with only one and nine. Okay? This is on the, um, the left hand side. Let's go to the right hand side. right hand side now for the right hand side for the right hand side this is what we're going to do because we know that because we know that a We have a complement, right, which is just here, here. A complement simply means all the members in A. Compare them to the union set and get whatever is, is in A but is not in the union set. So, of course, if you check, you're going to have, this is um, 1, comma 3, comma 5, comma 7, and a nine, if you check properly. 
Okay? Then you also go, you do the same thing to B. You check, you compare, you will discover that if you check all the elements in D, you compare them to the union set, get whatsoever remains in the union set, which is not in D, you are going to remain with 1, 4, 6, 8, 9. Okay. So now let's try to find the, co the, 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 the intersection of this. Where is a complement intersecting with a B complement, you would discover that these two are intersecting at some point where whatever is in here, we have one. Whatsoever is in here, we have a nine. Now check. On the right hand side, we have nine, we have one comma nine. On the left hand side we also have 1,9. This simply shows you that De Morgan's theorem is very much true because whatsoever we had on the left hand side we have proved that we, get, we also have it on the right hand side. Hence Thank you so much.